tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure Spring Security in your API in a few minutes. I have the simple API I created that returns a list of products and it runs on port 8080. So if you look at the port number here, you see it runs on port 8080 and it also gets some data from the database. It's run from port 8088. So if we actually go to the endpoint, HTTP localhost port 8088, and if I go to products, you can see that we have a list of products returned here. This list of products is coming from the database. So this is a basic API that gets data from the security DB. I have a database called security DB. Now how to set up a REST API for fetching data from the database. I also made a tutorial for that. You can check in the description of this video and you can see a link to that. But assuming you have a basic API that returns data, you now want to protect this API so that users will be required to log in uh, before they access the data. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to be able to register a new user and then be able to log in before you can access the data. If this has been informative for you, if my tutorials are beneficial, uh, then please subscribe to, to my channel and also leave me a comment. If you have any challenges, write me a comment in the comment box, box below. Now the step-by-step, -step, uh, I've made it. There are just six steps we are going to follow. So the first one is configure security filter chain. Using of, use, of use of security filter chain is the, is a new or uh, updated approach to uh, so Spring security. Previously, we normally extend the web security configurer adapter, but that has since been deprecated, and we have to now use security filter chain. Let's go ahead to get started. I like to first create a package, and this package, I'm going to place all the security related classes in this package, and I'm going to call this package security. And the first step says configure the security filter chain. To do that, we have to first create a configuration class. And that configuration class, I'm going to call it security config. Once you created this class, you want to annotate it at, with add configuration. But before I continue, I think I'll also mention that we need to add a dependency. So if you go to your pom.xml, you want to add the spring security dependency. This dependency has to be there. So once you add this dependency, you can reload your Maven. And then once you try to access the endpoint, once again, it will ask for username and password. So let's take for instance, so I restart this application. And right now it's going to ask me for username and password before I'm able to access any endpoints. So once you add Spring Security, it adds this basic security to your application. So you can see that it says using generated uh, security password. Now, if we try to refresh, it tells us to enter username and password. The default is user and the password is the password you have here on your console. So if I copy this password and paste it there, I'll, I still will be able to assess the, the data, okay? Okay, but this is not what we want to use. So let's go and configure the Spring Security to use our own user details. So here I'm going to annotate with that configuration. I'm also going to annotate it with at enable web security configuration, at enable web security. Okay, so that's the first step. The next step says we are going to configure the security filter chain. And to do that, we are going to simply write a function that returns security filter chain. So this is going to be a spring bean. So I'm going to annotate it with add bean. And that function is going to be public security filter chain. Security filter chain, and it's going to take HTTP, HTTP security as default. Like this is what we are going to be configuring. And we are going to now it's going to return HTTP security dot build. Now this is going to require Troy is, is going to our uh, throw an exception. So we're going to add this. Now, before we complete building this, we are going to do a bit of configuration. So I'm going to say, first, I'm going to turn off CSR ref because in this case, we'll be able to access the endpoint from anywhere, uh, including our local host. So I'm going to say the csrf and then csr csrf disable and I'm going to shorten it by saying replace lambda with method reference. So now I've turned off csrf and the next thing I want to do is to allow some endpoints. I want to allow slash register because for us to register a new user, we don't need to actually 
be authenticated. So I'm going to allow an endpoint and to do that, I'm going to create some authorized requests, authorized HTTP request, and I'm going to use this parameter and I'm going to configure it. Okay, so I'm going to say, so I'm going to configure it by saying dot authorize, sorry, dot request matches. And if I go to slash register, when I want to create a new user, I want to just permit. I also have slash login, so the login URL, people should be able to visit it without logging in. Any other request that comes in has to be authenticated. So I'm going to say any request dot authenticated. So here I'm allowing two endpoints without being authenticated. Okay, so at this point, we also need to specify that we need basic security. So I'm going to say HTTP basic and customizer that with default. So this is basically how to configure uh, the security field of a chain. So that is basically it. The next step is that we are going to create the authentication provider. So the step two says configure authentication provider. So let's do that next. Okay, so to configure the authentication provider, we are going to do the same right inside the security config. And this authentication provider is also going to be a Spring Bean. So I'm going to annotate it with a Bean annotation. And I'm going to create a public function that returns the authentication provider so it's going to return authentication provider and authentication provider now we need a number of things for the authentication provider of course the type of authentication provider is going to DAO authentication provider is going to be new DAO authentication provider so that means that we want to use credentials coming from the user stored in the database and we need to set the user details for this uh, provider so i'm going to obtain the user details from spring security so i'm going to say private user details service user details service and i'm going to auto wire this okay so the provider will need the user details service so i'm going to specify provider dot set user details service user details service and the provider will also need the password encoder this time i would like us to use decrypt password encoder normally we we can use no up password encoder for tutorials but normally i i think we should just use uh, a, a a real password encoder even though we are doing a demo so i'm going to say how to be public b create password encoder b create password encoder okay yeah, sorry so b create password encoder b create password encoder we are going to return new b create password encoder okay so we are now going to set the password encoder for the provider so provider the set password encoder is going to be b create password encoder and finally we are going to return the provider Okay, so we return the provider. So the next step we will take, let's say we have to implement the user details service. So I'm going to the service. I like to also put everything in security. So I'm going to create new class. I'm going to call it my user details service. This class will implement user details service. My user details service. And this class is going to implement user details service. And it's going to ask us to implement methods. So there's one method load by username. So it's going to fetch the user details from the our repository via the username. So I'm going to auto wire in the repository here, user repository. Uh, it's always good to use constructor injection. So to use constructor injection, just remove this auto wire here. So private final. And it's going to force you to do a constructor injection. So just add constructor parameter. And here I'm going to say user repository dot finds by username. Now in our repository, we don't have find by username. So we are going to simply create a create a find by username. Okay, so we find by username, but what we what we get here when we find by username is actually a user. So I'm going to say user user is equal to user repository that find by username. Okay, now we are going to check if the user is null. In that case, we have we we'll have to try an exception. So I'm going to check if the user is null. So if user okay, so user does not exist, but if the user is there, we are going to then return user. There's a problem here because what we need to return here is actually user details, not user. So what we are going to do is, there is a class that actually uh, is user details. So we are going to use that class, but we are going to, so we are going to actually 
respond user details. But to do that, we are going to extend this user details class. So I'm going to create a new class that extends user details. Since I cannot return user details directly, I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it user principal. So this class will implement user details since user details is a is an interface. So I'm going to just extend user details and it's going to force us to implement a bunch of methods. So let's just implement all these methods. Now we want to use the user we have from our repository, our own user. So our own user, we are going to put it, add it as a field here private user user okay because we want to wrap this user inside user user principal which is a user details and be able to return it and we need i need to add a constructor for this so this constructor will construct the user uh, principal which is a user detail and then we can return it now let's go back to where we came from which is where we have the user detail service so we have this user now we want to return new user principal and give it user okay so we need to do some kind of cleanup here so here we are going to be returning the password is going to be user.get password and the same goes for the username get username of course user.get username okay so we have uh, also authorities so we are going to return a list of authorities these are like permissions like read write or user admin and all that but we have not implemented that so we are just going to return randomly return one authority just call it user so it's going to be single theme and it's going to be new simple granted authority and it's going to be user so this is like can be user admin super user and all that okay um so we've implemented the user principle so let's see where we are we implemented user details implemented user principal now we want to update our controller to actually allow us to register a new user so let's go to the controller uh user controller now when we want to create a new user i want to register a new user so we are going to i like to change this to register right i want to change this to register and once we are creating a new user we will actually set the password of that user so here in user service add new user we are going to first set the password before we uh, register that user so to set the password i'm going to encode the password and i'll need to wire in an encoder here so i'm going to put in the encoder here private final bcrypt password encoder uh, password encoder and we're going to add the constructor parameter and at that point once we are want to, want to create a new user we are going to use that encoder to encode the encode the password and then set the password of this user uh, to the encoded password we're going to say user the set password and it's going to be password encoder and it's going to pick the password which is user.get password okay password encoder dot encode sorry this is my mistake okay so at this point when we register try to create a new user is going to create a new user in our database and encode the password let's see if we are missing out anything uh, run the application and create a new user first i'd like us to just go to the database so this is the database and this is the security db and we have the table user is empty right here nothing is inside so let's run this application and let's see if we can go to the register endpoint and create a new user i'm going to be using postman uh, to run this test okay so the application should start running on port 88 years okay so user detail service we need to annotate with add service annotation uh, service annotation okay um user principal i think we should be good to go so let's rerun Tomcat started on port 8888. So 8888. So I'm going to go to, if I try to go to product, let's try. And, and we are asked to provide username and password. For now, we don't have. So what we are going to do is to register a new user. So I'm going to go to Postman and I'm going to start a new request, HTTP request, going to HTTP localhost. Uh, 8888. I'm going to the body and I'm going to specify Rob. And I'm going to specify the user details. 
Okay, so these are the fields. So we want to make a post request to the register endpoint and let's see if this user is going to be created. So let me just do a few final checks to make sure everything is okay. So if I go to my user model, I'm going to check that we have first name, last name, username, username and password. So let's go back. Oh, I hope everything will work. So I'm going to send this request and it says 201 created. So it actually created it. And you can see that the password is encoded right here. And of course, if we go to the database, we will see the the user created right here, as you can see. Now we should be able to use this username and password to log in and assess the uh, product endpoint. So let's go back to uh, Postman this time. Let's go to product uh, and it's going to be a get request to product send and it tells us unauthorized. So we are now going to specify the username and the password. I think the password is one, two, three, four and I know the username so to specify the authorization we are going to go to authorization and i'm going to specify basic alt and you see i have the username and the password specified i think it's the same so hopefully we'll get the list of products if we sign now so you can see right here we got the list of products because we specified the username and the password so this is how to integrate Spring Security in your APIs. Later on, we are going to now discuss how to use form authentication, how to enter this detail via a form, a login form. And then I also made a video on using JWT authentication, JWT uh, authorization uh, to be able to retrieve access token and also use this access token to be able to access resources. So subsequently, I'll be making a video on how to set different permissions, for instance, user, admin, super user, and all those uh, permissions uh, in the subsequent video. I would like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and also leave me a comment if you have any challenge whatsoever. Remember, coming soon, we are going to be building a complete inventory management system using React front end and Spring Boot back end, and hope you'll be there. So we see in the next part.